What is numerology? The science of numerology is the science of numbers and their application to human affairs. Its principles were first laid down and codified by the Greek philosopher Pythagoras, who flourished about 500 years before the Christian era. Incidentally, we are indebted to him for our present system of music, which is based on the very same laws of progression that are the foundation of the science of numerology. There is, however, fragmentary evidence that some form of numerology was practiced long before the time of Pythagoras, its origin being attributed to the Chinese, who had attained a high standard of learning and culture long before our Western civilization had it begun. Narrator's Note There are, in fact, much older systems of numerology that preceded Pythagoras, and if I find the correct books to present this information to you, you can look forward to at least one audiobook on that subject in the future. Now back to the book. The Jewish Kabbalah, too, played a great part in the foundation of the science, and there is abundant evidence of its influence on modern numerology as practiced at the present time. There is no doubt that much of the ancient lore of numerology has been lost, but during the last few years a renaissance has taken place, especially in America where numerology is often referred to as the science of success, for reasons which will be obvious to the reader by the time they have finished listening to this book. Many excellent books have been written recently on this science, but, unfortunately, most of them are much too technical and involved, and only succeed in confusing the mind of the average inquirer. The author has therefore endeavored to place a working system before the public, which will be easily understood and enable the reader to work out his own numbers and those of his friends with very little difficulty. There are only nine primal numbers, one through nine, and numerology is based on these numbers because any number, however big, can be reduced to one of these nine by simply adding from left to right and reducing until only a single number is left. For example, with 53, you add the 5 and the 3 to equal 8. For 283, you add the 2 and the 8 and the 3. 2 plus 8 plus 3, which equals 13, which equals 4. Now there are only 9 distinct types of people, each of them governed by one of the 9 primal numbers, as follows. 1. The aggressive or courageous type. 2. The placid or balanced type. 3. The expressive or active type. 4. The deliberate or cautious type. 5. The versatile or restless type. 6. The dependable or considerate type. 7. The mystic or melancholy type. 8. The successful or powerful type. 9. The universal or magnetic type. You, dear listener, must belong to one of these types. Which one is it? Numerology will tell you, but it will tell you much more besides that, not only about yourself, but about your friends. With very little study, it will enable you to weigh up people in a way which will astound you. Why? Because, unlike phrenology, palmistry, divination by cards, etc. Numerology is an exact science. Numerology will not only tell you your destiny number, it will also tell you your positive qualities to be developed, your negative qualities to be suppressed. It will indicate the best mode of life, the best profession to adopt, the right people to mix with, from whom you will benefit, both materially and mentally. That is to say, the people whose numbers vibrate to your number. Practice this wonderful science, therefore, because the knowledge of yourself you will obtain from it, if acted upon in an intelligent manner, may quite easily turn failure into success. How to Obtain Your Number As we said, there are only nine types of people governed by the numbers one through nine, of which type are you? 
In other words, what is your number? It is simple to find out. Merely add up your birth date from left to right and reduce it until you get a single number. For example, say a person was born on the 5th day of February, 1897. Write down their birth date as 5 dash 2 dash 1897. Now add from left to right 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 8 plus 9 plus 7, which equals 32. Now add the numbers in 32. 3 plus 2, which equals 5. So we see the fatic or ruling number of this person is 5. That is to say, he or she belongs to the number 5 type of person. Let's look at another example. A person born on September 15th, 1992. 9 plus 15 plus 1992. All of those numbers added up equals 36. 36 added up equals 9, which is the fatic or ruling number of a person born on this date. Again, a person born on the 27th of November, 1906. 11, 27, and 1906. All those numbers added up gives us 27, which added again gives us 9. In the previous two examples, we find that the fatic number is 9, although there is a significant difference between years and the two birth dates. The characteristics of these two people will therefore be similar, whereas a difference of only a few days in the birth dates can make a tremendous difference, extending right through life to the two individuals concerned. Work out a few examples for yourself, and you will soon become proficient. This fatic number of yours is all important. In fact, it is the most important thing about you, more important than your name even. You can change your name if you like, but you can't change your number. The Fatic Numbers and What They Indicate Having ascertained a person's fatic number, in other words, having discovered to which of the nine types of humanity he or she belongs, we can analyze his or her characteristics, strong and weak points, etc., as follows. Number one. This number is symbolized by the sun, the center of the solar system, and the greatest body of our material realm. It indicates aggression, action, ambition, a strong number, representing force, creative ability, individualism, self-assertiveness. It is a number of ruling, directing, and the pioneer spirit that accomplishes things not accomplished before. The good qualities of number one are self-reliance, distinction, leadership, dignity, inventive genius, and above all, power and definiteness of purpose. Principal faults can include selfishness, domination, lack of forethought, narrow-mindedness, and an inability to heed good advice. Number one people are loved and admired by many, but they are also liable to create enemies amongst those whom they sweep aside in their desire for progress. Culture, education, and refinement are of great value, in fact are almost essential to the proper development of the number one person. Number two. This number is symbolized by the moon, which is ever-changing, yet complete and regular, possessing a gentle yet noticeable influence. It indicates diplomacy, antithesis, balance, contrast. A social number, tact, and the ability to make friends will ensure its owner happiness. The good qualities of number two are a keen sense of natural justice, tactfulness, desire for peace, the home-loving instincts, and caution. Many reconciliations have been brought about by number two people who are the world's peacemakers. They are unselfish and do not expect any return for their efforts, content in the belief that virtue is its own reward. Principal Faults Lack of Ambition Procrastination Overpassiveness and a tendency to give way to a stronger personality, even when in the right. 
a number two person should develop a certain amount of aggressiveness and not fear to take action when the occasion demands it. It is a number that presents great possibilities for development, but these possibilities may be wasted through failure to take advantage of them. Number three. Just as the triangle is uneven yet harmonious, so is number three. It is symbolized by the planet Mars, powerful, strong, fearless. It indicates talent, versatility, and gaiety, mirth, good cheer, pleasure, and inspiration being the principal characteristics of this number. Narrator's Note Depending upon the school of numerology, or system of numerology, that one is adhering to, it could well be said that the number three is represented by Jupiter, or even Venus, instead of Mars, or in addition to Mars. Now back to the book. The good qualities of the number three are independence, fearlessness, and enthusiasm. Activeness will quickly sense the time for tact, which is not instinctive in number one, yet does not depend upon tact as does number two. A person of this number can succeed in almost anything he or she undertakes, provided they will concentrate on the object in view. They will laugh at failure and have a natural capability for taking care of themselves. The enthusiasm of number three is contagious and will often sweep away difficulties which to other people appear insurmountable. Principal Faults Indifference Tendency to think more of popularity than of esteem extravagance, at times unjustifiable optimism, assuming that as they have been successful in the past, they are bound to be so in the future. The qualities most needed by number three are centralization and concentration of effort. When they have gained success, they should not allow themselves to be sidetracked by some passing fancy, because an opportunity once lost may never be regained and the strength and endurance of youth naturally become impaired with the passing years. They should cultivate effort. If their natural talent and versatility are coupled with consistent effort, the result will be a powerful combination toward success. Number 4. This number is symbolized by the planet Mercury, sometimes favorable, sometimes unfavorable, always influenced by the power of stronger, and more certain agencies. It indicates steadiness and endurance. It is the number of the hard worker and the plotter, of useful purpose, constant toil, and monotony. The good qualities of number four are regularity, deliberation, strength of purpose, and steadfastness. Usefulness is its chief asset. Some authorities consider number four people the salt of the earth because they are always ready to undertake necessary but unpleasant jobs, which otherwise would never get done. They also have a certain ability for scientific achievement attained by steady effort. Principal faults. Lack of imagination and initiative. Crudeness. Clumsiness. And inability to adapt themselves to changed circumstances. Number four has sometimes been called the symbol of defeat, poverty, and misery. This is not so. Number four people can attain success by practicing self-development. Education is of the highest importance to them, more so even than to number one, and without being arrogant, they should assert themselves more and demand the recognition which their talents merit. Narrator's Note do not be discouraged if you are a number four person and felt these characteristics to lean more towards the unfavorable. This again only represents one numerological model. In several ancient Eastern cultures, the number four, specifically 13, is considered a lucky number and like number eight, will frequently amount to material abundance and prosperity. The catch is, with this number's energy prevalent, the individual must, for the most part, make their own luck. It requires tangible physical effort and determination on the part of the number four person. However, provided they are willing and able to fulfill the former demands, great success and achievement graduate from possibilities 
to probabilities. After all, the master builder's number, 22, has a sum of 4. Back to the book. Number 5. This number is symbolized by Jupiter, the greatest of the planets, yet not always the brightest. Narrator's note, depending on the system or school of numerology that you are subscribing to, the number 5 could also be linked to Mercury. Back to the book. 5 indicates adventure, travel, and experience. The higher the number, the more complex the personality. Theosophists ascribe this to the added experience gained in successive lives. Be that as it may, number 5 is indeed so complex that it is difficult to draw a line of demarcation between its good and bad qualities. Many people ruled by number 5 accomplish little, but lead a confused, unstable existence. They have short bursts of enthusiasm, but lose interest too quickly to get anything done. They are rolling stones, however, and their wanderings frequently make their lives interesting and rich in experiences. Number five people have a dual personality. They can rise to the greatest heights and just as easily sink to the lowest depths. They are reputed to be successful in love, but will cast aside an old sweetheart for a new one, and so are often considered to be fickle and faithless. They make new friends easily, are good mixers, and easily influenced by their surroundings. Their principal good qualities are adaptability and ceaseless activity, principal faults, changeability, and fickleness. To attain the best in life, the number five person should cultivate stability, singleness of purpose, and endeavor to use his or her natural gifts for the benefit of mankind. Number 6. This number is symbolized by the planet Venus, which represents goodness, truth, beauty, and love. It indicates dependability and balance. Those owning this number are considered to be the backbone of a community. They are staunch friends, good citizens, honest, reliable people, homemakers, and kind and considerate folk. They are generally hampered by too much modesty, and unless this is corrected, are seldom appreciated at their true worth. In some ways, it is perhaps the most fortunate of all the numbers. The good qualities of number six are honesty, reliability, unselfishness, and evenness of disposition. They revolt against all unscrupulous practices and instinctively conform to established ideas of right and wrong. Principal Faults The very excellence of number six produces its own faults, which are intolerance of the imperfections of others, and a tendency to feel they are on a superior plane to the rest of mankind. Snobbishness and poor business ability. The last often shows itself in over-honesty, such as reluctance to enter into competition, and too much liberality to persons who are undeserving of it. To attain success, the number six person should cultivate business acumen and learn to make allowances for others. Number seven. This number is symbolized by the planet Saturn, dark and mysterious, which with its rings is different from all other bodies in our solar system. It indicates mystery, study, and knowledge. Those ruled by this number often have a hard time in the world and are not destined for renown or glory. Their natures are full of beauty and poetry, but they are seldom understood. Loneliness, sorrow, and excessive shyness, together with lack of social grace, mark this number. It tends towards the mystic and the occult. The good qualities of number seven are studiousness, inspiration, imagination, stoicism, and mental courage. Number seven people will undergo great hardships without faltering. Number seven is the mystic number and has also been called the psychic number. Many seven people possess strange and uncanny powers and are the world's mediums in the spiritualist sense. Principal faults. Melancholiness, moodiness, lack of self-expression, 
a craving for solitude, and a marked tendency towards too much introspection. To get the best out of life, the number seven personality should take an interest in the active affairs of life, learn to mix it up, and cultivate the right kind of friendships, seeking companionships with real friends who understand their complex nature and who will help them to develop their hidden ability. Number eight. This number is symbolized by the planet Uranus, which is influenced by the sun. Hence, it has a lot in common with number one. Narrator's note. There is a special and very sublime and hidden connection between Uranus, Venus, Saturn, and the sun. Perhaps one day we'll discuss it in a future audiobook. If you're interested in hearing that, let me know in a comment below. Eight indicates power, progress, and material success. Money and success are the qualities this lucky number attracts. It is the number of achievement, attainment, and acquirement. People under this sign are greatly respected. Business acumen and executive ability amount in them to genius. Number eight combines the judgment of number two with the carefulness of number four. The good qualities of number eight are practical knowledge, ability to conduct their own affairs, and also to direct other people, power of consolidation along practical, logical, and business lines. Principal faults, self-assertiveness, Restricted outlook, lack of imagination, and self-satisfaction. Not all number eight people are successful on the material plane, because number eight represents the ultimate in even construction and allows no room for a higher development. If their natural talents are not of a high order, they should surround themselves with people who possess the talents they lack, utilizing to the full their own inherent flair for directing others. The chief fault of number eight is really a result of lack of inspiration, that is, over-success. Should a number eight person fail in business, he should endeavor to reconstruct rather than recuperate, because number eight being a progressive number does not ordinarily come back. Number nine. This number, the greatest of all the primal numbers, is symbolized by the planet Neptune. Narrator's note, once again, depending upon the school and system of numerology you are subscribing to, the number nine could also be said to be represented by Mars. It indicates universal influence and magnetic power. Number nine has the success of number eight, with the difference that number eight is a practical number. Nine is not interested in material success per se, but achieves it usually by accident. Genius and great talent are the outstanding qualities of this number. Its influence is universal. Potentially, it possesses all the attributes of the other eight numbers. Instinctive knowledge is a great asset to number nine people. They are artistic in nature, possess charming personalities, talent, and have dramatic ability. They are outstanding and often develop a high personality that inspires the confidence of other people. Number nine is the number of the thinker. It has the logical and intuitive faculties equally inherent. The good qualities of number nine are integrity, idealism, and creative genius. Also, an ability to succeed without apparent effort. Principal faults. Number nine has its faults. Ambition always seems easy to gratify, and there is a tendency to defer constructive action with the result that when the time comes for action, they are unprepared and taken unawares, so many opportunities are lost. If the number nine person will only develop concentration and application and eschew in practical ideas, his path to success is assured, and his chances of rising to great heights in practically every sphere of activity, almost unlimited. We have now outlined the principal characteristics of the nine different types of humanity, but they must not necessarily be taken as hard and fast. 
There are exceptions to every rule, and this maxim applies equally to numerology, as it does to everything else in an imperfect world, limited as it is to a subjective concept of a postulated objective. The phatic number is invariably modulated to a greater or lesser degree by the individual numbers of which the birth date is composed, and an allowance must at all times be made for this. In short, everybody can attain to a certain amount of proficiency in this science, but as in everything else, music, painting, surgery, and so on, latent talent is absolutely necessary. In this case, that latent talent consists of the gift of interpretation. Numbers in Harmony There are no set rules, but the writer has found from many years of experience that the best working harmonies are as follows. For the number 1, the numbers 4, 2, and 7. For number 2, 7, 1, and 4. For number 3, 6, and 9. For number 4, 1, 2, and 7. For number 5, all numbers except 8. For number 6, 3, and 9. For number 7, 2, 1, and 4. For number 8, 4, 1, 2, and 7. For number 9, all numbers, but especially 3 and 6. The two principal aspects of life in which the consideration of harmonies is of the highest importance are 1. The choosing of business associates 2. In connection with love and marriage The student can investigate for himself along these lines amongst his own circle of friends whose personalities are already known to him a social club, a sports team, a committee, or a board of directors. If the individuals composing them are in or out of harmony, the reason is not far to seek. Work out their birth dates, and in the resulting phatic numbers, you will find the explanation. Harmony Colors and Gems The harmony colors and gems traditionally associated with the nine primal numbers are as follows. For the number one, the color is violet and the gem is diamond. For two, the color is dark blue, and the gem is sapphire. For three, the color is light blue, and the gem is turquoise. For the number four, the color is green, and the gem is emerald. For number five, the color is yellow, and the gem is yellow topaz. For number six, the color is orange, and the gem is orange topaz. For number seven, the color is red, and the gem is ruby and garnet. For number eight, the color is gray, and the gems are pearl and opal. And for number nine, the color is purple, and the gem is amethyst. Note, blends and contrasts of colors to suit the personality are indicated by the individual numbers composing the full birth date. Days in Harmony for number one, the days are Sunday and Thursday. For number two, Monday and Wednesday. For number three, Tuesday and Friday. For number four, Monday and Wednesday. For number five, Thursday and Saturday. For number six, Friday and Tuesday. For number seven, Saturday and Thursday. For number eight. Wednesday and Monday. For number nine, Tuesday and Friday. For those, the first day mentioned constitutes the major harmony, and the second day, the minor harmony of the week. Destiny years. Destiny years are those which vibrate to, that is, add up to the phatic number. The last destiny year for each number was as follows. The most recent one year was 2017. The most recent two year was 2018. The most recent three year was 2019. 
The most recent four year was 2020. The most recent five year was 2021. The most recent six year was 2022. The most recent seven year was 2023. The most recent eight year was 2024. And the most recent nine year was 2016. As you may have already determined, the year 2025 will be a year that vibrates to the number nine. If you ever wish to learn the next destiny year for a particular number, all you have to do is take the most recent year that bore that number's vibration and add it to the number nine. For example, if you wanted to determine in advance the next eight destiny year, you would take 2024 and add it to the number nine, which would equal 2033, and two plus three plus three equals eight. The present year, 2024, is a destiny number for all number eight people as it vibrates to that number. Suitable Occupations The boy, what will he become? Is he to be a clerk? Because his father is a clerk. Or a farmhand? Because his family, for generations, have worked on a farm. There are thousands of people in the world who are failures, not because they are lacking in talent, but because that talent is misapplied in uncongenial occupations. In other words, they are square pegs and round holes. Below, you will find a list of occupations best suited to the nine types of which humanity is composed. This list is by necessity limited and on broad lines, but it should not be hard to classify the various callings in life under the chief headings submitted herein. It must, of course, be remembered that no number has a monopoly on genius, which is governed by no known rules and is liable to appear when least expected, upsetting all the scientists' pet theories regarding heredity and eugenics. At this point, you may wish to pause the video, or even take a screenshot to give yourself enough time to look over all the professions and the numbers most suited to them energetically. Some famous people and their ruling numbers. Napoleon, Disraeli, and George Washington were all ruled by the number one, as was also Henry Ford, Lord Beaverbrook, and Charlie Chaplin. Number two, the number of the diplomat, ruled Thomas Carlyle. It also ruled Sir James Berry and His Majesty King George V, whose outstanding diplomacy has ensured him a firm niche in history. Charles Dickens was ruled by number three, as also Mr. Justice Du Parc, who presided at the Dartmoor Inquiry. It also ruled the late Queen Victoria. Four is the number of Marconi, the inventor of wireless, also of Lord Austin, the car manufacturer, and Gordon Selfridge, thus proving that the four person is capable of attaining material success. The versatile number five ruled Lord Tennyson, Lord Nelson, Charles Darwin. It also rules Michael Arlen, the novelist, H. M. Bateman, and Paderewski, people of widely divergent activities. The Duke of Windsor is governed by number six, as also are Sir Oliver Lodge, Einstein, Earl Baldwin, and Sir Alan Cobham. Many ecclesiastical dignitaries were ruled also by the number six, including H. E. Cardinal Bourne and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Lang. Ramsay MacDonald was ruled by the mystic number seven. Those who knew him immediately regarded him as the true seven type. It is also the ruling number of De Valera, the stormy petrel of Irish politics, and of Winston Churchill. The late King Edward VII was ruled by the number, but did not have one in his birth date. The number eight, the psychic symbol of human justice, governed such legal luminaries as Lord Reading and Norman Burkett, K.C. Oliver Cromwell, ruthless and in practice very material, was also a number eight personality. The host of famous people ruled by the all-powerful nine is endless. It includes Lloyd George, Sir Abe Bailey, 
John D. Rockefeller, Baden Powell, Henry Ainley, one of, if not the finest, of our modern actors, to name only a few. The interested reader can gather many other examples by a perusal of Who's Who and similar books of reference. Narrator's Note As you can probably tell, this book was written quite a long time ago. So just to bring this into modern perspective, we're going to look at three very different individuals in the public sphere with a very interesting synchronicity due to a similar number vibration. Donald Trump who was born June 14, 1946. Melanie Robbins, or Mel Robbins, who was born October 6, 1968. And Keanu Reeves, who was born September 2, 1964. If we add up all the numbers in their birth date, we get the same Vedic number of 31, which added up equals 4. So all three of these individuals have a Vedic or life path number, as it is commonly known, of four. However, they are also affected by their individual birthdays, which is also a powerful psychic number. With Trump, it's five. Mel, it's six. And Keanu's is two. Reflect on this, and how they represent, and embody, and personify these very distinct number vibrations. Back to the book. Name Numerology Besides our Phatic, or ruling number, obtained from our birth date, we also possess a name number which is calculated by adding together the numerical values of the individual letters of which the name is composed. If your name number harmonizes with your birth number, so much the better for you. If it does not harmonize, it should be made to do so by adjustment, that is, leaving out one of the first names or using just the initial of that name. Indeed, if you like, you can even adopt an entirely different name in order to obtain the desired harmony, and there is nothing illegal in doing so provided, of course, you do not use it for criminal purposes. There are many instances on record of people who have benefited by a change of name, one notable example being the late Mark Twain, the famous American humorist, or another example being the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was not born with the name Martin. Every letter in every language has a numerical value. The Hebrew alphabet consists of 22 letters, each with a number equivalent, as recorded in the Kabbalah. Mathematicians are aware that the Greek letter epsilon is the base of natural logarithms, and every schoolboy knows that pi is an essential factor in determining the area or circumference of a circle. What is the precise number value of each letter in the English language? This is a problem that has perplexed the numerologist for many years. So much depends on the equivalent value of a letter in different languages, and a knowledge of phonetics. Nearly every book on the subject seems to differ from the others, each having its own system, and an empirical one at that. The system observed here has a mathematical basis, and has been evolved with due regard to etymological idiosyncrasies and phonetic balance. It has successfully survived the test of clinical experience over a number of years. It is hoped, in the near future, to issue a companion volume to the present one, dealing with this aspect of this fascinating science. Comparative Numerology Man is a gregarious animal, and his life on the material plane consists of permutations and combinations with his fellow beings. Individual isolation would obviously result, in due course, in extinction. In the major affairs of life, marriage, business, and mental uplift, a true harmony is essential. The numerograph shows if this exists. For instance, if two people are contemplating matrimony, will it be successful? A comparison, not only of the phatic numbers and the name numbers, but also of the individual numbers in the birth dates, will prove extremely useful. These numbers need not synchronize. In fact, generally speaking, it is better if they do not. But if, in conjunction, they form a symmetrical graph, it would tend to show that that particular union would be beneficial 
and productive of good results. Experience is, of course, necessary for the proper appraisement of a comparative numerograph, the weighing up of the specific values of the endless number combinations being a somewhat intricate matter. Comparative numerology, however, is an advanced stage of the science and should not be attempted by the student until they have mastered the first principles. Coincidence or what? It has often been said that you can make figures prove anything, and there is a certain amount of truth in this statement. It is possible, by algebra, to prove to the bewilderment of the average person that 1 equals 2, and only a mathematician can detect the flaw in the argument. Again, by using the Pythagorean system of addition, it is possible to subtract 45 from 45 and still leave 45, all of which seems very confusing to the uninitiated. A too ingenious manipulation of figures may be fraught with danger, a fact of which several well-known financiers in the past have been only too painfully aware. The line of demarcation between Park Lane and Parkhurst is a very fine one, and it all depends on how you handle your figures, and which of these sylvan retreats you eventually find yourself located. Be that as it may, right through history numbers seem to have played a very important part in the destinies of empires, kings, and peoples. The number 88, which is really 7, is known to have been a very fatal one for the House of Stuart. Vital events in the life of Oliver Cromwell always transpired on the third day of the ninth month. The number 2 has always been a dangerous number when affixed to the name of a king or ruler, and presages a tragic end. For example, Charles II of France, poisoned. Henry II of France, killed in a tournament. William II of England, killed. Richard II of England, murdered. Edward II of England, murdered. In the book of the Apocalypse of St. John the Mystic, who, of course, besides possessing psychic gifts, was an expert numerologist, occurred these words. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. It is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. That is to say, the number of the beast is six six six. Now it is remarkable, to say the least, that if the numbers in each of the vertical columns of the numerograph are added together, they each total six, giving six six six. Add six 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 together and we get 18, which equals 9, the number of completion. The figure 3 was important and outstanding in the life of Jesus Christ. There is no actual birth date to commence with, but his parents lost him for three days. When he was 12 years of age, 1 plus 2 equals 3. He had 12 disciples, 3. His ministry lasted three years. He died on the cross at the third hour. He rose again on the third day. A passing reference here to number 13 would not be out of place. It is generally looked upon as an unlucky number, its malevolent influence being attributed to the fact that there were 13 people at the Last Supper. As a matter of fact, 13 was considered unlucky long before the time of Christ, the superstition dating back to primitive times when man was incapable of counting more than twelve. Anything beyond represented the unknown and therefore was to be feared. There is evidence to show that in certain primitive languages, the same ideograph was used to represent the number thirteen and the word unknown. Narrator's Note This only applies to particular people and particular cultures. There are cultures which still persist to this day, that have a very different opinion of the number 13, and in fact considered quite auspicious and fortunate. Back to the book. Number 5 played a big part in the career of Mr. Gladstone, the grand old man of the Victorian era. He was born on December 29, 1809. He was, therefore, a five personality. He first entered Parliament in 1832, which equals five. At the age of 23, a five, 
he received 887 votes, which is a five. He first became prime minister in 1868, which equals five, at the age of 59. He died on May 19th, 1898, which adds up to five, and was buried in Westminster Abbey on May 28th, 1898, which adds up to five. Merely coincidence, you might say. All right, this final example is still more remarkable. In July 1910, a great sensation was caused by the murder of a woman named Mrs. Crippen and the subsequent arrest of her husband, Dr. Crippen, and a woman named Miss Leneve. At the time of the murder, Dr. Crippen was in his 49th year, and these numbers 4 and 9 played a most important part in the dramatic events which followed. Dr. Crippen's age was 49. Mrs. Crippen was last seen alive January 31st. Dr. Crippen and Miss Leneve ran away July 9th, which is a nine. Remains discovered four days later, four days later, on July 13th. Nine days later, the captain of the Montrose wirelessed that he believed they were on board, July 22nd. Nine days later, they were arrested. They were placed in separate cabins numbered 8 and 5, totaling 13. They were in prison in America for 18 days, and they embarked for England on the 18th. They were on that voyage for nine days and landed at 1.30. They appeared before the magistrates at 10.30. There were nine counsel engaged in the case, and the trial began on the 18th. It lasted four days and finished on the 22nd. Dr. Crippen was hanged at 9 o'clock a most unusual hour, as murderers in England are invariably executed at 8 a.m. Here there is indeed, I think, food for thought. The poet was right. There is a divinity in numbers, either in chance, nativity, or death. If the reader cares to experiment in his or her own life or those of their acquaintances, they will doubtless come across some coincidences similar to those enumerated here. It will go a long way toward strengthening the belief in the science of numbers. Numerisms Modern numerology is still in its infancy, and like every other science, is slowly but consistently being developed. Fresh discoveries are constantly being made. We already know that a zero next to a number adds intensity to that number. A seven in the birth date indicates inability to keep money. More than one nine shows a tendency to depression and more than usual care and responsibility. Two sixes make for dogmatism and argument. More than one number one in a birth date means great determination, and unless there is a zero next to it, selfishness. At the moment of birth, our days are numbered, and right through our life, our whole existence is ordered and controlled by numbers. We rise at a certain hour. We have our meals at certain times, work so many hours, and so on. In fact, in everything we do, numbers play their part and are inescapable. History repeats itself by numbers. It can be epitomized in numbers, dates. The Great Pyramid of Giza is believed to contain a forecast of the destiny of the world. To understand it, all that is required is the key. That key will eventually be found in the science of numerology. Numerology is based on mathematics and is therefore free from the danger of local color that is bound to influence intuitional methods of psychoanalysis. There is a freshness about numerology, which is intriguing. It has not become encrusted with shibboleths and foolish fallacies, and above all, unlike astrology, palmistry, phrenology, and the rest. It has not been exploited by the charlatan and the illiterate quack. The beauty of numerology is that it can be treated in many ways. The mathematician can devote himself to new calculations. The historian may study the numerology of famous and infamous historical characters. The criminologist will obtain substantiation of many of his theories by its aid, and so on. 
Numerology provides first-class entertainment. If you go to a party, you can't sing, play, or even recite. You feel out of it. When asked to do something, just say you are a numerologist. You will find that you have unwittingly monopolized the whole of the proceedings. In fact, you will be the star of the evening. In conclusion, do not forget, good results cannot be obtained without constant practice. Numbers can, and should be, applied to everything. There are exceptions to every rule. If the perusal of this little book succeeds in giving encouragement and help to only one person in this complex world of ours, the author will feel his efforts have not been in vain. The skeptic may sneer and say, <laughs> numerology, a collection of mere trifles. Quite. But as Michelangelo said, trifles make perfection, and perfection is no trifle. The End Thank you for listening to The Science of Numerology. If you would like to hear more books about numerology, as I do have one or two in the wings that I would like to record in the future, including one that explains Chaldean numerology specifically, please thumbs up this video or leave a comment under the video to let me know your interest. After all, my mission here is to present you with information that you can apply to your life for the better. And the things you don't listen to aren't going to be able to help you. So help me help you so we can continue to help each other in these times where every single life, every single person, and every single good deed goes an inconceivably immeasurably long way. Thank you for listening.